Good morning. Welcome to Hard Lens Media. This is the last episode of 2017. My name is Kit Cabello. I'm joined here with my fellow co-hosts Daniel Lucker and Lauren Hun. Uh, I'm back again. I'm just recovered from a horrible case of pneumonia, so uh, it's good to be back here with the show, but let's get started on today's topics. Uh, interesting enough, we're going to start off with gentrification and how it's really affecting uh, basically a lot of low-income working-class communities. So in this article that we actually posted on the Facebook page, uh, the Atlantic uh, posted about the criminalization of gentrifying uh, neighborhoods. And there are many areas that are changing economically, and it's basically drawing in uh, more police and creating conditions in, in which surveillance and more potential misconduct is happening. So let, let's, let's take a long look at this. Whenever gentrification happens, especially in working class communities, uh, the first thing that always happens is that the people are going to be starting to get displaced and harassed mostly by f first the large real estate developers that want to remove them and then there's also the police presence that's there as well um, we've seen that time and time again in the Pilsen neighborhood South Austin Northwest side uh, center as well uh, they've talked about it especially in regards to how uh, because of the increase in rents and housing prices people are basically struggling to survive and if you put people in a corner for too long what are you going to get? People are going to try and push back and try and survive by any means necessary. And it's just another sad history, especially in a lot of large metropolitan cities here in Chicago. I mean, Daniel, we were talking about this a while ago, you know. Yeah, so this is, um, in a sense, it's almost as American as apple pie, what's going on here. It, this is a reaction to the way that we've organized capitalism. This mm -hmm. is a way that we've organized in uh, systemic racism and how you know in a lot of ways what's happening to these communities is as is is exactly what the system should be doing as it's described this is to me this is the system functioning as it's intended and that's a really sad thing that in 2017 we're still dealing with antiquated issues that go back hundreds thousands of years due to tribalism and a uh, class and but here we are dealing with the same issues. Well, interesting enough, the article mentions that over the past two decades, gentrification has become a norm in a lot of major American cities like New York, Chicago, L.A., and a few other major metropolitan cities. And basically what happens is like low-income uh, neighborhoods where longtime residents and businesses have been there for such a long time are then displaced by white-collar workers and overpriced businesses like coffee houses or maybe a fancy restaurant or maybe a tech center gets built up there. And then basically what happens is the the higher income residents who come in have access to, you know, better resources and can call in the police in case there's like large noise disturbances or people loitering outside or talking. What I think a lot of these new uh, these people who come in from higher incomes fail to realize is that in a lot of low income neighborhoods, people talk to each other. They hang out outside. There's a lot of music playing. There's the culture. I, I still can't forget that Red Eye article that I read a long time ago, it says, see Pilsen before it disappears. And Pilsen has a long history of music, culture, dance, and art. Yeah. But that article was only talking about the hip, fancy coffee spots to go to or the nice restaurants to go to, ignoring the culture of the people. And that, that's kind of what, I'm, what we're, I guess we're, all of us are getting on this. The uh, issue of gentrification is that it's people that are in communities that have been asking for resources, education, all opportunities, more jobs for a very long period of time, and they are ignored, they are chastised, their representative, they're in gerrymandered districts, that, and they're, uh, uh, they're, whoever their alderman is, whoever, wherever it is in the country, uh, don't really care because, we've again, we've organized ourselves that money wins, and these people don't have money. And so then once that land becomes interesting to people that do have money, mainly developers, even though we still have tons of empty homes, we have millions of empty homes due to the uh, 2008 crash that are still not being filled. But regardless, they still see this, these areas as, oh, this is a way we can profit. These are low land value areas that can be developed. So by the time all these people are kicked out, all the things that they were asking for, you know, better schools, better, better everything, better infrastructure, that all gets fixed. They're just not there for it.
watching Hard Lens Media. Hard Lens Media.